Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. I've always wanted to make one of those steel pipe desks, but the hardware on that stuff can get pretty expensive, so I thought I would buy just the pipes and 3D print everything else. All right, let's give it a shot and see if it works. I went to the hardware store and instead of buying four separate pieces of pipe, I bought one long 10 foot one and had them use this really cool machine to cut it and actually thread the pipes for me. I then designed a flange that screws into the pipe and I use the term design loosely here and I'll show you in a minute what I mean. I sent this to my CR10 3D printer and printed it with the threads and the big test here was to see whether it would actually screw into the pipe. And as you can see, it threaded very smooth. Instead of buying additional pipe to use for my back and side braces, I decided to just go with some scrap wood I had lying around. So I cut these down to size and then designed my own custom bracket that would hold the pipe in the wood, which I also sent to the 3D printer. I laid out all my parts, which included the plywood, the pipes, eight 3D printed flanges, along with the 3D printed brackets. I marked and pre-drilled the screw holes on the plywood, making sure not to go all the way through. I then screwed the flanges to the plywood and for some added strength I included washers between the plastic and the screws. Next I attached the legs by threading the steel pipes into the 3D printed flanges and I'm just really happy at the quality of the threads here on the printed parts. No post processing involved, I simply popped these out of the printer and got a perfect fit. The printed back and side brackets also attached with a nice friction fit here, but I will be using some CA glue just to help it stay in place. I attached the back wooden brace to the brackets and pre-drilled and screwed these into place. I did the same thing with the side braces, making sure to level it first. These side brackets are pretty much just a miniature version of the back ones. Now came the moment of truth. I had to flip this table over and to be completely honest, I wasn't confident that this wasn't going to collapse under its own weight. It was a very awkward process and I'm actually playing this back in double speed so I don't draw it out. Uh, the steel legs here are very heavy but the 3D printed parts did manage to hold it and I managed to flip it over without destroying everything. That was close. And here is the finished product. I gotta say, I'm happy with the way this turned out. The brackets and the flanges are holding pretty well and honestly I did this just sort of as an experiment to see if it could be done. And is it the strongest table I could have built? No, there's definitely some improvements here that could be made, but for what I needed for it, just to sit down, throw my laptop and create a design, it's exactly what I need. I mentioned earlier that I used the term design a little loosely and I'll show you here what I mean. So to design the flange, I actually took a bit of a shortcut. I brought the part in from the McMaster car catalog. To do so, all you need to do is go to insert, down to insert McMaster car component and that brings up the McMaster car catalog. So I'm going to expand it by dragging on the corner here and then you can simply start typing in the search box here to tell it what you're looking for. So we'll start with flange and we'll just hit enter and that's going to bring up a bunch of options here on the main window and we can select to start narrowing down. So I'll go with pipe and pipe fittings and I'm going to go with metal pipe fittings since I have a steel pipe that I want to get a flange for and I'm going to go down and choose iron and steel threaded pipe and pipe fittings. Uh, next I get some more options here. But at this point, let's move to the side here because I want to show you a different way of narrowing it down. You can also use this little side column here. So we'll select flange. Uh, we have iron and steel. Um, we want threaded, so we're going to select that. And then we get our pipe size. I know I have a one inch pipe, so I'm going to further narrow the selections with that. Pressure, I'm not really going to worry about since I am going to be printing this in plastic. Uh, instead of ordering it. Uh, class, I'm not going to worry. Outer diameter, I'm going to go with the smallest one, which is four and a quarter. And that's all I'm going to select from here. And then I'm going to look at my main window to see what my results are. So I start seeing these different product numbers here with the specification that I chose. So basically, we just have to pick one of these. And we can take a look and we can confirm that our pipe size, outer diameter, 
the bolt holes, uh, you know, PSI doesn't matter, but we can just confirm these uh, different options here. And then when we're happy with one, we can just click on the product number here. Uh, a quick way, if you already know your product, you can actually just type that in to the search bar and that'll bring you right to the product. But we're gonna go with the 68185K112. And when I select on that, I get the option here to click on product detail. You'll notice a little CAD symbol here. I'm gonna click on that and that's gonna bring me the product page where I can get some more details and also actually see the drawings. Now, I like this one because it's flat on one side and some of them that I looked at, uh, they, there was this little bump out here on both sides and I need one side flat if I'm gonna print it. So I can verify my dimensions and if I'm happy with this and I wanna bring the model into Fusion 360, all I have to do is click on this little drop down arrow, uh, get these, uh, look at these options and you can bring these in in different formats. We're gonna select 3D Step and then click on Save. And once we do that, we'll get that right into our design. Here it is, I'm going to just leave it as it is. I mean, I have the option to rotate it if I want, but I'm gonna click OK. And now that I brought it in, I actually have the option to modify it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is change the size of these holes because they're a lot bigger than what I need for my screw holes. So the beautiful thing with this is I can just click on the surface and hit the delete on my keyboard. And Fusion does an excellent job of just healing it and knowing exactly what I'm trying to do so that I get a very nice smooth surface here. So I'm just gonna click on my view cube here to look at this straight on. And then I'm gonna create a sketch. I'll go to sketch, create sketch, and create a sketch right on this top surface here. And so I'll just draw a circle, a C4 circle, and I'm gonna make this diameter five millimeters instead of the huge one that was there previously. And we'll go ahead and constrain this to the center axis here. So I'll grab a horizontal constraint and just lock that in place by clicking on the origin, hit escape. I'm just gonna eyeball this to get it to roughly the center here. And if I wanna lock that in, of course, I can hit D for dimension and enter a dimension between those two points. And 37 looks like a good number there, so I'll choose that, hit enter. And now I can go to sketch down to a circular pattern, choose that circle, select my center point here and I'm gonna increase the quantity to four. Click OK, stop the sketch up here and now I can simply hit E for extrude and then select each of these profiles and just extrude these all the way through and I'll make sure to select uh, all as my extent and click OK. And now I have my four holes there. That's exactly what I need. So just a quick modification there to get this to what I need, you know, and basically design this part or, you know, again, design uh, just under like a minute, really. Uh, another thing I didn't do, but I would actually recommend doing if I had to do this over is I should have added a fillet here to make this part stronger. So just F for fillet and grab that edge and bring it out you know, maybe like a three millimeter fillet there uh, just to give me some strength and then okay. So that's about it. And then we can just go ahead and send this to the printer by going to make 3D print, select our object, select which uh, type of slicer you're gonna send it to and click okay. I believe I printed this at 20% infill and at 0 0.2 millimeter layer height and that worked well for me. But as always, I would encourage experimenting because your application might be a little bit different than mine. Let me know what you thought of this project. I always enjoy reading your comments below. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, just leave it below. I've had the desk for about a week now and it's holding up pretty strong. I'm pretty confident it's gonna last, but if it does collapse on me, I'll let you guys know. All right, guys, as always, check out my website, desktopmakes.com, where I have a bunch more Fusion 360 tutorials, and I'll see you next time.